Hey, this is Steve Halleck of TikToking, and I've got another really cool watch to review for you guys today. Before I do, please hit subscribe on the channel so you get these uh, videos first. And check me out at Steve Halleck on Instagram, and as always at TikToking.com. And let's get into this one. So, some of you may be familiar with this. This is the Roman Gautier Logical One. Really one of the coolest uh, pieces of independent watchmaking in the last several years. And uh, let's, let's just do a deep dive on this one. Uh, first materials, this one is the natural titanium case with the white uh, Grand Fu enamel dial. And it is light. Um, you know, some titanium is really light and some isn't so light. And this one is particularly light. Um, which I love because it's got this very technical look and obviously this amazing finishing and classic watchmaking and then in this really light wearable case is is awesome um, you'll notice uh, no crown at three o'clock just this little guy here and this weird button here we'll get into those um, but let's stay on the case for a little bit I never realized when I looked at pictures of this case that it was so intricate so I figured, you know, you see this, uh, the top, the bezel, and the lugs, which are brushed, and I just figured the whole case was just brushed titanium, and, you know, that was that. Um, but in fact, you can see that's brushed. This is like a matte grained finish. It's high polish in the center section, and it's actually quite a complex case, which is really, really nice. I was a little worried about, like, the all brushed titanium case. Um, almost looking like a prototype or something like that. But this really jazzes it up and makes it feel like a, a, the special watch that it is. Um, so the case is, is really cool. It's kind of uh, uniquely formed and it wears really nice on the wrist. I'll show you that later. It's 43 millimeters, I believe, by spec. Um, but these lugs come quite, f uh, I mean the strap holes are quite far into the lugs. Um, it fits pretty nicely on the wrist. Uh, so let's see what makes this watch unique. Um, the biggest thing obviously that you notice is this big chain here. So now we have to talk about power delivery in watches a little bit. So one of the problems in a mechanical watch is that the power delivery from a spring is not linear, which means that when the spring is fully wound, it's not delivering Pow uh, the same amount of power as it is when it's almost completely unwound. And when you have in a traditional watch, your mainspring is linked directly by some gears to your, um, well, your balance and your timekeeping, and it's all kind of a one linkage. Um, the differences in that power delivery can affect the rate keeping of the movement. You can imagine that when, the, when it's really, really strong, there's more force uh, here on the uh, escapement than when there's just a tiny little bit. Uh, as you can see, sometimes when you wind up a watch in the very beginning, it's not even enough to get the balance wheel going. Um, and then once you get it fully wound, it's really going. Okay, so um, there's a bunch of different mechanisms to counteract this, and one of them is called the chain and fusée. And that is what Roman Gautier has chosen to use, although he has modified it quite a bit. So if you look at my Breguet Tradition Tourbillon review, you'll see a pretty traditional uh, chain and fusée with the big uh, cone that the chain wraps up around. Um, Roman Gautier instead is using this snail cam and uh, he's built a totally unique chain. The chain itself has ruby bearings all the way through. So I think you can see there the kind of purpley red uh, middle of that chain. So the entire thing is these tiny little high pol black polished parts with ruby bearings in between. It is an incredible work of art. Um, and the finishing in general on this piece is absolutely top notch and stunning and particularly effective because there's so many different kinds of finishing, right? You've got the, um, the black or gray grained finish of the base plates here. You've got uh, a, a lot of anglage. You've got this uh, black polish here. 
uh, you know, just all sorts of cool stuff that makes each unique finish totally pop. And in fact, um, all these angles have to be hand cut and hand finished. You can see almost every piece is beveled and finished. Uh, it's really a stunning work of art. And as I said, I think, uh, you know, particularly unique and cool in this titanium version that gives it a real um, mechanical feel too, other than like a jewelry object. Um, so I want to show you how this works because it, it, it's pretty cool in its execution. The winding is actually done via this button. And when you push the button, you can see the boom chain work that was enough power to get the balance working here right um, and then on the back I'll show you what else you see so you see that snail cam moves so here you can really see the winding system there's a power reserve on there another unique thing normally the mainspring is covered by um, a barrel that's uh, generally steel and so you can't really see the mainspring um, this is actually a titan uh, I'm sorry a sapphire um, barrel cover on both sides uh, and it reduces all friction with the mainspring uh, so that's another uh, time uh, precision uh, function to help keep the power delivery more smooth and also if you see the teeth here um, those are uh, a unique design uh, to Roma Jerome for uh, power delivery so watch what happens when we wind it from this side right so that's what's happening every time you press this button. This cam comes over, engages with these teeth, and actually moves the spring. It's pretty cool, right? That's totally unique. I've never seen anything like that. And it actually winds the watch quite quickly, right? You know, this is a two-day power reserve, and it's pretty fun to do and it's actually one of the only watch designs that um, is, is really safe to do on the wrist you know you're never really supposed to wind a watch on your wrist um, because you're kind of exerting uh, some pressure on the crown up like this and it can it can bend uh, or break the crown stem uh, but this you know you can't you can't hurt it at all so even on the wrist you can give it a go and it's totally fine, right? So then this tiny little crown up here sets the time, obviously. Um, and then this is a really cool design thing, what they've done with this dial, right? So it's an actual um, Grand Fu, like high-fired enamel dial, real enamel. And it's beautiful and thick and creamy with these beautiful traditional blue uh, indices and hands. and. It just is this really cool nod to like traditional watchmaking thrown into this wild, uh, obviously contemporary mechanical beast. And I really like the execution of it, especially with these uh, very traditional shaped and blued hands that are quite beautiful and really stand out against all the grays, right? So then the other thing to look at here that I'm hoping comes through in the video is just how three-dimensional everything is. You have these big bridges that, that really um, come up and are holding components on different planes. Uh, so you can see there you've got the, uh, the mainspring and sapphire barrel held up here. And then uh, this cock is here a little bit lower. Uh, you've got this entire open section that of course goes to this beautiful look at the shape of that gear so that's the mechanism then that goes into the constant force and connects the mainspring with the balance and escapement um, and then again here you've got this beautiful beautiful bridge holding the balance and that brings it from that plane up here you can see there and even the dial itself is floating above the main plate so you've got a real play with the space 
it's not a super thick watch, but it's, it's thick enough that uh, there's some real space that uh, Roman was able to play with nicely in design. Uh, so let me show you this watch on the wrist. Again, it's 43 millimeters. It's a uh, it's very well proportioned watch. It's sort of a classic contemporary size at this point. It'll remind you of a lot of others kind of on the wrist, but there you can see it fits quite well. You know, I don't have the biggest wrist. People sometimes ask me in the comments. My wrist is probably a little bit, a little bit under seven. Uh, inches or so, uh, depending on how much sugar and salt I'm eating. <laughs> but you can see it, it's just nice on the wrist, it hugs nicely. It's got a real presence, obviously, and you get that uh, the fact that it is a really special uh, and really unique and uh, mechanical art piece, but it's certainly not uh, over the top or flashy or unwearable in any way and in fact in the titanium it's so light and nice uh, to touch and everything that it, it, it really feels at home on the wrist. Uh, this is a watch especially in this titanium version with the white dial that could really be a daily wearer watch. Uh, I could see getting a lot of wear out of this watch uh, if it were in my collection. Unfortunately it is on its way to a new home and uh, I'm sure it will be loved. So this is it. This was the Roman Gautier Logical One in natural titanium. I hope you guys enjoyed this review, and I'll catch you soon.